We begin by getting to know our heroine, a high school athlete named Chan Mi, who will soon compete in a pistol competition. However, when we first see her, she is on a video conversation with her cute twin brother Park Won Suk. Although they are far apart, she is on the beach in Busan, he is in school in Seoul, their relationship and affection are clear to see. Chan Mi initially objects, but eventually caves in and calls him Appa, which she does as sarcastically as she can. He is just 10 minutes older than she is, after all. This is such a great beginning sequence since the camera cuts from Chan Mi on the beach to Won Suk in his classroom so rapidly. This helps us comprehend their relationship and the basic structure of the characters right away. It's incredibly well thought out how what we see in the classroom and what Chan Mi sees on the other end of the video conference interact. Chan Mi notices the phone dropped, hears a voice, then the call is cut off. Won Suk looks up and reacts to someone entering the vacant classroom. She does not see what we do, which is terribly important, there is a struggle, and Won Suk dies after falling from the window to the snowy ground below. Chan Mi makes a mistake in the pistol championship because she is preoccupied with the fact that it has been days since she last spoke to her brother after their frantic conversation was disconnected. The story moves along quite quickly as it follows the fiercely independent Chan Mi to Seoul. We learn more about the siblings' early lives in an orphanage in Busan, although Won Suk, whom she refers to as Chan Gyu, was adopted when she was eight years old. The twins were heartbroken to part ways. Chan Mi is loitering outside her brother's high school in Seoul when she hears from some nearby children that Won Suk has passed away. It's incredibly well played as a scenario and completely surprising for her. Chan Mi can be seen in quick succession confronting Won Suk's parents, obviously they had no idea the two kids kept in touch, and then arriving to the neighborhood police station. She meets with the investigating detective at this point and complains vehemently that it wasn't suicide as everyone assumes. She asserts that her brother would never commit suicide, explains the events surrounding their last phone contact, and demands to know why his cell phone is gone if this is simply a suicide case that has been swiftly closed. She is fired, and like the heroine she is, she resolves the situation on her own. She soon transfers to her brother's former high school, which is the worst thing she can do for her athletic career. She had to beg to stay in the Goshuan she intended to live in, since she is underage, she buys a cheap scooter to move around the city, and we see just how much this 19-year-old is used to being independent. Ji Soo Hyun life is no brighter than Chan Mi's. Actually, it might be worse. Soo Hyun works like a beaver at his part-time jobs, bowling alley, delivery food boy, but he's burdened by the medical bills of his mother, who's sick and requires hospitalization. He visits her and their relationship is super touching. Despite the fact that he has no money to spare, his scooter is taken following an incident. Additionally, the accident was caused by some neurological problems he was having. Chan Mi buys the stolen scooter that Soo Hyun was riding, and the two begin dating with more animosity than anything else. Due to said scooter, they cross paths multiple times, and it all comes to a head during Chan Mi's commute on her first day at the new school. Soo Hyun is on a borrowed motorcycle, and Chan Mi is riding a scooter. After a close call, Chan Mi ends up covered in trash. Like in many of Soo Hyun's scenes, this one reveals the chivalrous and kind young man hiding beneath the ruffled feathers and tough exterior, he assists her in washing her shirt while awkwardly attempting to avoid peering through her wet shirt, and when that tactic fails, he lends her his school jacket to wear. And by that, I mean tosses it her way before heading out. Chan Mi therefore begins her first day of high school while wearing Soo Hyun's jacket. Naturally, this generates a lot of discussion, and the students wonder if they're dating. Furthermore, theater fate has it that the two end up in the same class. However, their relationship is further strengthened by Soo Hyun's slight mistrust of Chan Mi. She has tracked out the phone number of her brother's girlfriend, but Soo Hyun answers the phone when she dials the number. Following him about for a while, Chan Mi eventually finds them at a hospital. She then overhears his talk with his doctor in a moment that, on so many levels, defies credibility. Soo Hyun is such a freaking loser. In addition to caring for his mother and facing financial difficulties rather than practicing his boxing, he has recently been diagnosed with an incurable brain tumor and has been given six months to a year to live. Chan Mi is remembering the day of their call in the still cordoned off classroom where her brother fell. Shockingly, Soo Hyun suddenly arrives in the space. 
He claims to have been considering the child who suddenly passed away before admitting, I wasn't close to him, but I saw him fall and contacted the police. The web keeps spinning for Chan Mi, which is awesome because no one is aware that the two are siblings yet, thanks to his adoptive name. She is now considerably more wary of her surroundings, while Su Hien is probably just starting to think about his future. Although Chan Mi appears to be adjusting well to her new school, her research isn't so straightforward, as seen by the appearance of several new characters. The school bully Sa Yung Kyun is back, and he has a fantastic haircut if he weren't such a terrifying kid. His parents helped him get out of his most recent situation when he had raped a student. In his presence, she cowers, and he rules over her. Chan Mi is understandably wary of our aggressive bully after hearing about him. One day while in class, she hears a student braggadocio, now that Won Suk is dead, he can be the top dog. Chan Mi confronts Yung Kyun about the uncaring way he is speaking about the deceased before she can even process that sentence, of course, keeping her personal connection a secret because it is her secret weapon. When our amnesiac pupil J Bum intervenes to defuse the situation, it appears as though Yung Kyun is going to crush Chan Mi like an ant beneath his heel. The way the other students treat him and how the rest of the room reacts to him is extremely fascinating. Later, when Chan Mi is chosen to instruct J Bum in target practice, the two of them are once more brought together. She is a particularly rigorous trainer, and J Bum struggles to keep the gun from shaking in his worn out arm. She doesn't warm up to him until much later, when she realizes that she's helping him recover his memories by working with him in therapy. J Bum genuinely comes across as a complete puppy. He loves Chan Mi right away, obtains her number, and later has his driver make a stop so he may exit his car and welcome her on the way home. Speaking of pups that aren't quite puppies, we need to catch up with Su Hien, who is initially just doing more of the same by working hard to pay for his mother's medical expenses while running around working. But in the course of yet another appointment with his doctor, a crucial hint surface. He inquires, have you experienced any abrupt personality changes? Any violent outbursts? One day at school, Chan Mi sees Su Hien in excruciating pain at his desk. She follows him to the restroom out of concern. This directs her straight into the male restroom, where the two unintentionally discover the rape victim who attempted suicide earlier. Su Hien heroically leaps up and over the restroom stall, and they ultimately succeed in saving the girl's life. The detective Chan Mi had previously met was summoned to the scene, which is significant. Chan Mi basically defies the detective's advice to not conduct her own investigation and requests that the detective keep her relationship with Won Suk a secret. 